Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. On December 31st, 2010, my guest was a drunken atheist. Two weeks later, just two weeks later, he could see supernaturally into the invisible realm, was holding prayer meetings in his own living room and casting demons out of people. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. You know, I have found when someone has a God called destiny, literally, the devil tries to snuff their life out, even before they may even know the Lord. Isaiah, about five times, yes. the devil tried to destroy it. Just tell us a couple. One of them was I was a kid, I almost drowned. The other one is I fell out of a car, actually, as a kid. The third one was I was actually behind a tractor in a trailer. We were going 45 miles down the road, and the trailer broke and flipped over with me and my brother under it. And the guy driving the tractor didn't know, drove a mile down the road with us under that. And I remember even in that moment, feeling this out of body experience, knowing something was in there protecting us. And then again, in college, overdose, the, the doctor said, you are three times what your body should be able to handle of drinking alcohol. I'm talking severe alcohol poisoning where I couldn't move. The most significant, Sid, was when I was 12 years old. I was actually in a barn with a friend of mine riding bikes. We had just got done watching a movie called American Outlaws where they were hanging Jesse James. And so I was joking. It was an accidental mm -hmm. thing. I said, I'm going to hang myself like Jesse James. And there was a big metal chain hanging from the roof that they were using to pull out engines and transmissions. So I put that rope around my neck and was swinging while my friend had left the barn. And I was still swinging, what happened was I had passed out from how tight the rope was, right. and the rope had spun, lifting me up into the air. So I woke up into this almost like out of body experience where I could see my hands to my side, I could see my legs, and I could see I was four to six feet off the ground, hanging in this barn, with the chain tightened up, lifting me in the air. And I'll never forget this, and I just feel the power of God when I say this, I felt the softest hands I have ever felt go in between that chain and pull that chain open. And I immediately fell from, the, from how I was to the ground, crawled to the corner of the barn. My neck was bleeding because it was so tight. I looked back, I saw the chain still up in the barn, tightened up, and the only thought said that crossed my mind was, there's a war going on, and something is trying to kill me, and something else is trying to save me. Even up until, said a month before I got saved, I was in a hotel room. I have never been suicidal, said I never had a desire to take my life. I was in a hotel room, and there was a force that came over me that brought me to the 13th story of a balcony and said, just jump off, just jump off. And I'm talking about the most overwhelming overwhelming feeling I've ever felt. Some of you watching might have had this experience before where you felt a spirit come over you trying to force you to do something. And so I was at that balcony looking down there, not knowing I was going to get saved in a month. And I knew this was the devil's last ditch effort. Now I know I didn't at the time. And another voice said, spoke, and I didn't know the voice, the voice of God said, go lay down, go lay down, go lay down. And there was this battle. I ended up laying down, of course. And a month later, I got radically saved and God's hand was just on me. Okay. Look, the devil tries to destroy him all these times. 19, he's an atheist. His sister is giving him the business. Come to church, come to, I'll go one time. What happened? Yeah, so I was raised in church like many people watching. 16, I decided to become an atheist and stop going to church. At 19 years old, I'd graduated high school at 16. I was a month from graduating college at 19 to become a police officer, go to the academy with an administration of justice degree. And my little sister for six months said, just go to church one time. And she kept saying, I'll never bug you again, just go one time. So I said, I'm gonna go. And I told my girlfriend this just to shut her up so she'll stop bugging. I'll never forget this said, walking through the door of that church, this thought came into my mind. This will be the last time I ever stepped foot in a church building. And I walked in there, I sat in this mega church in the very back where they rope it off. I said, I'm not gonna listen to this. I was making fun of the people on stage. After the preacher got done preaching, I felt, now this might strike some unbelief in the audience here, but I felt something pulling on me as if you were grabbing my shirt and pulling me to the altar. Now I didn't know what it was, I just knew something is pulling me and I, I couldn't fight it to go to the altar. And I went forward to that altar and I stood there and I said something that's gonna make a lot of religious people upset right here. I said, God, I don't effing believe in you. I actually cussed at God, I didn't know. You know, the Bible says, while we were sinners, Christ proved his love for us. But I said this, said, if you're real, 
If you are the God they say you are, and I just feel it right now, I said, I will lay down everything. I will give you my life. I will break up with the girls with for four years. I will quit my job, that my dream job in law enforcement I'm about to get hired as. I'll leave everything. I'll move out of state. And, and the reason I was so bold, Sid, was I didn't believe God was real. So I could just say <laughs> yeah, whatever I want. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And in that moment, I said that. Again, an atheist didn't believe. The audible voice of God. We're not talking about a small voice. We're not talking about an inward. The audible voice of God from heaven said, Isaiah, I don't want 99.9% .9 of you. I want everything. And if you give me my, your life, I will use you to preach my gospel to all nations. And God, I, I was in a trance-like state. I wasn't, I didn't feel I was at the altar anymore. I was in, it was, I just saw glowing bright lights. Like I was in another dimension and I just heard the Lord speak to me and God began to show me in visions. Everything I'm doing right now, I saw 10 years ago, the traveling, the preaching, the miracles, the deliverances, revival in my home. I started seeing that that night. Um, one thing that I wanted to say that was very incredible that began to happen. When I came out of this vision, literal dirt started coming out of my eyes. I'm not talking spiritual. I'm not talking about mm -hmm. in the spirit. I'm a, I was an atheist five seconds ago. Dirt was coming out of my eyes and God began to remove the dirty scales that the world and, and lust and everything had put on me. And I was born again, speaking in tongues, trying to cover my mouth so my girlfriend wouldn't hear. I mean, no one was laying hands on me. I didn't know what it was. I had only heard tongues one time in my life. Mm. And now I'm sitting there oh, oh, speaking violently in tongues and the Holy Spirit just really changed my life. And, and, and you know what's so amazing to me? I mean, one day you're an atheist. The next day, literal dirt comes out. It reminds me of a famous Jewish man by the name of Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul. He had spiritual scales over his eyes. In effect, Isaiah, the spiritual scales came off of your eyes and then not only did they come off of your eyes, it gets even better. He started seeing through spiritual eyes for the first time in his life. You, you knew things about people. You saw, you actually could see demons. Am I right? Yeah. So when the service got over, I didn't recognize anybody said, I didn't, I only recognized my sister. I said, I got to go home. They said, what happened to you? I said, I don't know. I'm a different person. I am a different, I'm talking about, I didn't recognize colors. I said, what color is that? I don't think I've ever seen that. It was just blue. I just, everything was new. I got home, didn't sleep for three days. But what happened was the next day I went to college, I got on my college campus, Sid, and I started seeing demons and angels. And I'm not talking about just in the spirit. I was seeing them like if I was seeing you all around my college campus, warring over people. I started hearing voices. I didn't know they were words of knowledge, but getting words of knowledge for kids around me, my teacher. I looked at the guy next to me in class, I'll never forget, and I said, what, well, what happened to you? He said, what do you mean? And I started hearing about what he had gone through as a kid and what he had been through, words of knowledge. I thought he was talking to me because I didn't know how radical this you know, was. You know, it reminds me, that started happening to me. Wow. And I had never been, I was just like you. I'd never been taught. I didn't know, even, I, I would be speaking and I could hear a physical condition that was wrong with someone. And I didn't even, it took me months to even say it out loud. No one told me I should say it out loud. I had no guidelines. So, and then almost immediately, you're in a Bible study in your parents' living room. Yeah. Casting demons out of people? Yeah, so two days, about two, well, it was, now it was three days later, didn't sleep. My uncle was in ministry, said, okay, you're talking for 14 hours straight. You're seeing demons and angels. You're prophesying over the animals. I mean, you're just going crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was just very radical. All my friends, everyone's just, and he said, what is God saying? What is the end goal? What is God doing this for? I said, I see a revival breaking out our house. I see thousands coming. Now, he's an organized mega church. He thought, there's no way. There's no website. There's no Facebook. There's, that doesn't happen. And sure enough, said the people I used to party with, the old friends, the family, they heard about there's this radical kid on Castle Road that encountered God and they begin to drive Sid and they went from 20 the first night to 50 to 80 to 120 to 203 up to 500 people. Now, mind you, you say, how would 500 people fit in your house? I was we, wondering. We that. had a large country house and I moved all the furniture out. I told my parents, God is saying he wants to make this his dwelling place and his, his sanctuary. So we moved out every TV, every furniture, emptied out my parents' house and we had a big country property and we begin to see Sid, a, a organic, authentic move of God. A one lady, the very first night, started manifesting a demon, and I didn't know what demons were. Deliverance right. wasn't, and I just thought. And the Holy Spirit said, "This is your, this is it. Go for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna train you and teach you." And I wanted to say this: said when I first got saved and said, "God, I don't know what to do. I don't have anything for you." The Holy Spirit told me He was gonna enlist me in a, the school of the Spirit, and He was gonna train me. Now, many people to this day say, "Well, who taught you to preach?" For the first three months, said I've only shared this maybe one other time. For the first three months of my salvation. 
I would wake up every single day preaching, standing up. I, I didn't wake up in my bed for three months. I would wake up standing up preaching. My mom and dad would say, we would listen at your door and you would be preaching full messages. And I remember there were moments where I would wake up in my body preaching full messages and I would actually remember the message. And I said, God, what is this? And God said, I'm going to teach you to preach. I'm going to teach you to pray. And the Holy Spirit for three months taught me to preach in the middle of the night. So this was what God was doing very radical and people begin to come. Miracles broke out and the rest has been history. But Isaiah, you must have learned so much about how the demons operate in the invisible world. I mean, did you get that? He saw a war going on over people's lives. They, they were oblivious to it. But this doesn't mean that in the invisible world that wasn't going on. And there's people watching us right now, and there's a war going over your life. And the truth of the matter is, God loves you as much as he loves Isaiah, as much as he loves me. The truth of the matter is that you don't know when your end will come. The truth of the matter is that God is extending his hand to you. The truth of the matter is that God wants you just like you are, and he'll transform you. Maybe not the same way he did Isaiah, but the way that he created you to be. All of us are different. But if you will say this prayer out loud, it's a free gift from God. It really is. It's not based on you earning or being worth it. In God's eyes, he says, you have worth. You are someone special to me. It doesn't matter what anyone else has said. God thinks you're special. You wouldn't be watching right now. I want you to repeat this prayer out loud after me and believe it to the best of your ability. It's not asking too much. Repeat this prayer. Dear God, out loud, dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away my sins and I'm clean. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come inside of me. I make you my Savior and my Lord. Lord Jesus, I want to experience your goodness. Amen. Well, you say that we are created to operate in God's supernatural. What do you mean? Yeah, so so many people think that the supernatural, the power of God is only for a specific pastor or a specific leader. But what God has showed me recently is this is for every single believer to walk in the power, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the leper, and to preach the gospel. So what we've been really focusing on doing is training the average believer on how to walk. Not what would Jesus do, but doing what Jesus did. This is the mandate for every believer. And I had a point where when I first got saved, I looked at my Bible, said, I'll never forget this, my uncle and pastor, I looked at it and I said, wait a minute, this says in Mark 16, 17, we can cast out demons, those that believe. We can heal the sick. And I looked at him and I said, can I do all of this, all that the Bible says? And he tells me to this day, in that moment, I had the chance to give you the religious answer and say, oh, well, that's not all the time in God. Or I can say, yes. Everything in this book you can do. And that's the reality I said is we have access to walk in the supernatural, the same spirit. And I just feel the Holy Spirit so strong right now. The same spirit that raised Christ is now alive on the inside of us. And too many of us that are watching have sold ourselves short, are not walking in the potential and the destiny that God has in our life. And many of you don't wait until you get to eternity before you realize the power that God has made available for you to walk in the supernatural. Now is the time, Sid, for the average believer to walk in the supernatural power of God in their everyday life. Yeah, you know what I'm reminded of when you told me what your uncle told you? Something that Billy Graham heard from God. Very few people know this. He struggled with his faith, Billy Graham. And this is what he heard from God. This book, this Bible is my book. Believe it. No matter how hard some of the stories, because it involves the invisible realm, seem at this point, believe every word. Billy Graham said from that moment on, he believed even the index. He believed everything in the Bible, and look what God did with him. Hollywood stars 
coming to Messiah starting this year, more than when we return. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. We've found over a thousand planets outside our solar system just in the last 20 years. There are at least 100 billion stars in the Milky Way alone and at least 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. There are more stars than grains of sand on all Earth's beaches combined. Up to 4,800 stars are born every second. There are 86 billion neurons in the average human brain. If you unraveled all the DNA in your body, it would span 34 billion miles, reaching to Pluto, 2.6 billion miles away and back six times. With 60,000 miles of blood vessels inside the average human body, you could circumnavigate Earth two and a half times. Nerve impulses travel to and from the brain at speeds of up to 250 miles per hour, faster than a Formula One race car. If the human brain were a computer, it could perform 38,000 trillion operations per second. The world's most powerful supercomputer can only manage 0.002% of that. Is all this creation a random coincidence? Or was the universe created by design? Is there a creator who has a plan for you? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that answers these questions and many more. Get a free online download of the book. They fought for themselves by logging on to the website theythoughtforthemselves.com. Isaiah. God told you, starting this year, celebrities from Hollywood, from social media, would start contacting you and coming to know the Messiah. Uh, tell me a few that have actually already started. Yeah, so I got this word that there was going to be a revival happening in social media influencers and celebrities. And I don't know, at this time, said I don't know any celebrities. I've never, I don't have contact, just several through the years, but no one really prominent now. And we begin to, I told, and that was on January 1st, January 7th, I told my brother, we need to take over YouTube. We need to preach. We need to, we need to just take over these platforms for the honor and glory of God. A week later, a major social media influencer, 10 million plus subscribers on YouTube, contacted me saying that she's had a radical encounter with the Holy Spirit, that she's gotten saved through the broadcast, she's watching all of our streams, and God has touched her. And Sid, I'm telling you, I'm not talking about in a church or just give this up. I'm talking about no more movies, no more music, throwing out her alcohol, no more cussing. She was into the occult. Ouija boards, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on astrologers, mediums, psychics, talking to fire, levitating. These are all stuff she told me. And I, I've met with her in person, and now the Holy Spirit's come to her and encountered her, and she's getting rid of everything. She threw away, said, listen to this, $100,000 of jewelry that was given to her through people, different people in high-level witchcraft in Hollywood. She threw it away, and she has a video of her throwing it in a trash bag and throwing it away, and the bag started moving. And this is the level of witchcraft these celebrities are into. And now we've been pastoring her. We went down to her house to deliverance on her. She is radically on fire for God like you'd never believe. I had another well, girl write me. I thought it was a girl. She wrote me on Instagram saying, I've been watching all your stuff. I want deliverance. And I went on her page. It was explicit. So I got off, told my wife, can you find out who this girl is? She's been watching her stuff. She wants some help. My wife goes on there. Turns out she's actually a guy. She's one of the heads. She's a guy. She's a guy. 
head spokesperson for the LGBTQ community, the night she texted me or messaged me on Instagram, the night before she was hosting the Queer Awards. So here she is hosting the Queer Awards and then going backstage and watching our live stream, watching Deliverance, watching Holiness, watching Revival, and God is moving. We had another celebrity who's a prominent in movies and celebrity that actually drove down to our area and we did Deliverance on. So a lot of these celebrities said are contacting us, are getting saved, and I'm talking radically saved. I, it brings me to tears because I I know it's the Holy Spirit because of how radical they're saying they need. They're saying, I need to throw all my movies. I need to, and that's what I had. My experience was, and I know the Holy Spirit. There's another guy recently I'm getting in contact with who is a rapper, and he he actually encountered Jesus in a dream. And Jesus encountered him, said, I'm coming back. You need to turn your life together. He's a big, big rapper that just got saved recently. And so these are many celebrities that are seeing Jesus in dreams, encountering the Holy Spirit at nighttime, and God is radically reaching these people. And so within seven days, I told my brother, we got to take over YouTube. This girl who's friends with the vice president of YouTube is now reaching out, contacting us saying, I want to serve God, I want to know God. And we've been passing around. I got on the phone with her just four days ago. Uh, had a three-hour talk with her, and she's doing amazing. God is moving. Um, power of God has been moving in her life. Yeah, you know what I'm wondering is there a third of Jesus' ministry was casting demons out of people. One third. Where'd those demons go? They're still around today. We have a generation that has been raised so far away from God worldwide that millions are going to need deliverance. Is that what God was referring to when He told you about the deliverance ministry? Yeah, absolutely. So in August in 2020, when the Lord had a visitation, the Lord said, I, I want you to train in spiritual warfare the supernatural power of deliverance. And I said, how could I do that for more than one hour? Well, now it turns out, Sid, after 50 hours of teaching and training on deliverance, we've been seeing people equipped and be just being radical for deliverance. And here's the thing God showed me was, when all these people come out of quarantine and come out of the isolation, mm -hmm. the anxiety, the depression, the mental battles, where are they going to go? When these celebrities said, want to get saved, these high-level witches and warlocks, I was dealing with a girl yesterday that's in big, taught yoga for years, where are they going to go? So we have to be ready as believers, not just the churches, but all of you watching, we need to be trained and equipped and ready to deal with these demons of these people that are coming out of the occult, that are coming out of Hollywood, that are coming out of New Age, that want deliverance. And our Messiah was the one that introduced deliverance. He didn't there, want to There are people watching us right now many of the people that have strongholds in one or more area of their life that they can't overcome. Some may be gluttony. Some may be pornography. Some may be feeling worthless. There's, it, there's a million of these strongholds. Well, our Messiah came to set the captives free. Isaiah, would you pray as God directs you to break strongholds over people, and this is going to change radically your life, to break strongholds and any words that God has? Absolutely. So there's many of you watching that have gone through times of depression, anxiety, trauma, tormenting thoughts, anxious, racing thoughts. And what you need to understand is what the devil will do is these are not demons, these are fortresses towers, castles that the devil builds through wrong thinking in our minds that develop into strongholds. I like to think of it, and maybe you're new, as a stronghold. The devil has a stronghold on you, and you can't get loose. You say, Isaiah, I just can't get out of this depression. I just can't get out of this anger, this, this suicidal tendencies and thoughts. But the Bible says that our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, for the pulling down of strongholds. So we have power, and right now, as I pray, I'm believing for the divine power of Almighty God to just break every stronghold. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we break every mental stronghold, depression. You are broken in Jesus' name. Anxiety, trauma, stress, tormenting thoughts. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus against every stronghold. We command them to come down in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power over these children of God. You must get up and go in Jesus' name. The Lord is against you. We pray, break it right now in Jesus' name. Every tormenting thought, I'm, I'm even getting a word of knowledge. Those of you that are suicidal through this quarantine, you've been thoughts of taking your life. God is saying, do not give up. Now is your moment. Now is your time. Right now, he wants to set you free from the powers of suicide. So we come against now. Every suicidal thought, every tormenting thought, the powers of suicide are broken in Jesus' name. We speak healing. And there's somebody watching right 
right now that you need a right hip replacement and you've been praying, you've been asking, you've been in pain, you've been having trouble getting up off your couch, I see you right now on your couch and God is bringing a divine hip replacement. I've seen this before, a creative miracle. God is bringing you right there on your couch. God is bringing you a divine healing miracle on your hip. We pray creative miracles and breakthrough right now over you in the mighty name of Jesus. This was a breakthrough moment for you. There's someone, I don't know if you broke your wrist, there's a wrist, wrist problems are being healed in Jesus' name. Breakthrough. Botch surgery leaves a Jewish man paralyzed for life. He becomes deeply depressed, knowing that he'll be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his days. But then he discovers a revelation that totally changes his life and leads him to be miraculously healed. He completely regains the ability to walk even though 25 doctors, neurosurgeons, and neurologists can't explain this. Do you want to learn what this revelation was? For the ending to this true story, go to www.theythoughtforthemselves.com. Next week on It's Supernatural. Do you want to see God's tangible kingdom, power, and glory manifest in your life in a real way? Then join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth and discover the keys that will open doors and open the heavens to you. Don't miss it.